Welcome back to Consider This. In this episode, we're talking about finding your life partner. And in studio, we have Sean and Lindy. You guys have been married for a year and a bit, a year and a month. Yes. And um, you're still young people. How old are you guys? Well, I'm 22 and okay. she's 23. Okay, so you're still young. And I mean, you, you went through the dating phase, courtship, all those things. And now you're married for a year. Is, is, it, is it as good as I say it is? Well, it's tough, but it's good. So. <laughs> so tell me, how did you guys meet? So how did you know, Lindy, I mean, Sean, I mean, how did you know he was the one? Well, we met during missionary year together in a okay. group called Abundant Life. We were working a lot together, praying a lot together. We were just friends. And during that time, we were praying a lot for God, for guidance. We were both at a stage where we didn't want relationships. We just wanted to put God first yeah. in our life. So we were spending time really earnestly praying that God would guide us in what we were doing. Okay. And we ended up being best friends. And from there, things just evolved. Now, Sean, I mean, you were best friends. Okay, but how did you make things evolve? I mean, there's, there's kind of an expectation that the man should always take the lead. How mm -hmm. did you know she was the one? Well, I don't really know. But yeah, through prayer and spending time with God and just asking Him to lead me, to show me the right thing. Okay. And yeah, so from there, I don't know, it just took its way. So I can see in your relationship, both of you were Christians and both of you, you were seeking to, to follow God. And then you got together. How important is spiritual matters in your relationship as, as a couple? Well, yeah, God comes first and our spiritual lives come first. And that's like the most important thing for us. And that's... Another thing we have in common is, is, is that vision of God comes first. Okay, but for, as a youth, just normally, I, if I've, I feel like I have God in me, must I do nothing? Must I just wait for God to... Prayer. Yeah. Prayer is a very important part of your relationship with God, talking with God and knowing Him personally, mm. and then He will guide you. And we were doing Bible studies while we were dating. It was a long-distance relationship. Every morning we would meet each other, over our cell phones and just chat about what we read, share our thoughts nice. and grow spiritually together. Okay. And through that, we could feel God guiding us and experience His hand in our relationship as well as we grew not only together and closer to one another, but also closer to God. And that's very important. God should always be part of your relationship. Mm -hmm. does, yeah. he, does He send any signs? Maybe I should ask. I like maybe I uh, hope this light falls down and if it That's does, a good <laughs> question. no, I, we don't have any signs that I can think of right now. Maybe Sean has something that it's, he, it's, uh, <clears throat> I'll say it's more of a, it's almost like a feeling, a certainty that you know, yeah, yes, that peace, you can't know, you can't explain why you know, but you just know that this is the right thing. It's, it's bringing you closer to God. And there's a quote, we were reading a book together and it's all about relationships and how it fits in with God and what God yeah. expects from us in relationships. And this quote actually said that three questions should be asked in a relationship. And the first one is, how is this actually bringing you more heavenward? Mm. How is it improving your path towards heaven? Mm. The second one is, is it increasing your love mm. for God? And the third question is, how is it enlarging your sphere of usefulness in life? Mm. Mm. And if those questions are answered, then you can proceed in your relationship mm. in a God-fearing manner. And yeah. that's what we did. Okay, now I've got a question. Okay, now, now Sean and Lindy, now you, you were best friends, you shared everything, you had all those butterfly feelings, and you, oh, you couldn't wait to get <laughs> you know, with each other, and now you were married. Now you've got this perfect girl and this perfect guy, and now it's just happily ever after. Was it like that? No. Well, no. <laughs> Not. It's a lot of hard work, okay. yeah. and it's important that young people should know. Marriage isn't just you go stand in front of the altar and you declare your love to one another, and that's it. It's hard work, even dating still it, it's not that hard when you're dating because you kind of you do anything for that mm. person mm. but once you're married it's hard reality it's you're not that willing to give in anymore in situations sure. you just you have to work at it yeah. every day you have to commit yourself to that relationship so i mean as i can see it's not just when you're married that's when it stops that's actually when it begins mm. yes. that's now right. what kind of um, hints would you give how, how do you mean work at it does it mean that you have to do the dishes, that kind of work, or work at your relationship? What, what practical things do you guys do? <clears throat> well, yeah, dishes is... Uh, is a good that helps. <laughs> it helps. But firstly, God should be first. Do Bible study together, grow spiritually together, share with one another as you're growing. Mm. And then, you know, give in a little. Don't always expect your way. Sometimes you have to give some to get some. And if you always put that person first, that person's going to do the same for you. 
It's actually this <coughs> quote in Ephesians 5.25 that says, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and mm. gave himself for the church. Mm. And I think as, as, as a man you must, you must take that in thought that you, you should give yourself rather than to expect a lot and to just give what you can for so it's like person. a service thing. You yeah. want to serve your bride and she wants to serve you. Yeah. Um, would you guys say that there's a difference between Christian relationships and just normal other relationships? Like in your marriage, if you weren't Christians, do you think your marriage would be the same? No. No. Why not? What is, it, what is the fundamental difference? Well, God is the, is the if he's the fundam fundament. He's the glue. He's the glue, yes. He's that, Sticks that keeps you together. together yeah. <laughs> and you know, if you make him the, cent the center of your relationship, then you've got this, this assurance, this peace, which you won't have when you're not a Christian. Okay. So you can man. have God and a life partner, both of them at the same time. It's not that if you want a life partner, you kind of have to shove God at a side, but, um, or you, you can have yeah. both. Yes, yeah, you, you can. can. But you should probably find, well, what do you think? You should find God first. Yes. And then your life partner. It's very important. God should always come first. As soon as you put your life partner before God, then you have a recipe that's doomed to fail. Mm, okay. And if you look at that, the whole reason we have this whole thing of a relationship between a husband and wife, why, the reason why God gave it to us is to remind us of His love that He has for us right. and how He loves us unconditionally. And we can see that in our own relationship when He, he does that little things for me that He's really going out of His way. Mm. You just kind of stop for a moment and think like, wow, how much more doesn't God love you? Yeah. And that mm. brings you closer to God and that's the purpose of it. Yeah. Hmm. And would you say that your vehicle is, or your marriage is a vehicle of, say, um, evangelism, how you can work together mm. in, in ministry or something like that? Yes, it's a, it's a powerful tool if you use it correctly. Okay, like how, how would you say, can you use it? Or in your relationship, if you give an example? Well, yeah, like you said, if you give an example, if you set an example for others, mm. okay. then that already is a big impact. We have a lot of young people coming to us saying they're also doing example Bible studies in their relationships mm. because we were doing it. And now yeah. it's encouraging to see how many of your friends are doing mm. it in their relationships That's and right. how they don't have to go through troubles that other people have to go through because they are putting God first. Okay. So just the way that you are living your life can be an example, the way that you show that God will, will yeah. help you in your relationship. And what about character building? Are you guys strengthening each other? Do you feel like? Well, yeah, being married is a lot of character building. <laughs> <don't Yeah. you? laughs> yes, no, we, we encourage each other. and we One help, person's yeah. stronger in the one area and the other's weak in the other area. And that way you kind of complete one another. Not because it just naturally happens, but you have to work at it. And it's, again, you have to be willing to give some and to take some every now and again when you need it. Not to be too proud to mm. ask for help, mm. but actually be willing to go to the person and say, Yo, I can't do this on my own. Okay. When we come back after the break, we will delve more into this topic of finding your life partner. Family, global vision, and a holistic approach to thinking and living, unlike any other media source on the planet. Welcome to Hope Channel. Every hour of every day, any family member can watch. Hope is educational, inspirational, focusing on lifestyle and health, and offering programs for young and old alike that teach culture, positive values, and spirituality. It takes a global network to be in touch with planet Earth's global community. Hope broadcasts everywhere in the world with seven global channels and we're affiliated with more than 50 media production centers on six continents. The result? Hope Channel provides a diverse cultural programming mix in many of the world's major languages. Hope is more than great television. It's also part of an international conduit of educational institutions, churches, retail outlets, and hospitals that represent a solid economic base. And Hope Channel viewers are loyal, encouraging friends and neighbors to watch. Why? Hope viewers believe that Hope Channel not only enhances living, but changes lives through its compelling lineup of programs. Documentaries, taking your subscribers around the world and back through time, visiting places where history was made. Fascinating biographies that open up the lives and times of people who made a difference in society. 
travel programs that transport the viewer around the world, demonstrating how people work together to make a better planet. Inspirational programming challenges viewers to experience the joy of discovering faith values and offering spirituality as an important part of a balanced lifestyle. Health and lifestyle programs teach disease prevention and make healthy living simple and attractive. Hope Channel programs provide invaluable support for developing healthy relationships and strong communities. Diverse and positive programming. A global infrastructure and network. A commitment to family-friendly programming 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. This is Hope Channel, your source for quality of life programming.